Hello everyone, welcome back to Larry Vale's Traffic Division. Okay, so we looked at the casino, um, so what's what's left? I mean, we've seen pretty much this whole place, right? Well, I guess, I think we've seen most of the screens that are in the game by now. Um, so I think we're at kind of one of those stages where it makes sense to go back and see how things have changed. You know, sometimes when you come back to places where you were before, there have been, you know, some changes to uh, things. So let's... Let's kind of revisit some of the places that we've been to. So let's see, where have we been here? Have we been in this uh, in this room? Oh, I think we can't go into that room. Okay, that's fine. And uh, <coughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think we can't get into that room either. What about our room? So our room that we have here with Charlie. If we go back inside here, is there anything, uh, anything? Uh, uh, okay, well, yeah, I guess there is something different here. Uh, I think this uh, was, was not here before. Looks like the lovely Rita 4200 has her energy back. The maid is sprawled out on the floor, being courteous enough not to show you her fatal wound. Okay. Well, let's do what comes naturally and use the action icon on the corpse. Points. The maid isn't carrying anything, but you slide a loose hairpin off of her head. You just have no respect for the deceased lately, do you? Well, I mean, come on, we're a police officer. We're supposed to inspect the uh, we're supposed to inspect the scenes of the crimes. Leave her alone, will you? She's been through enough without you treating her like a cracked bank vault. <laughs> Amazing, Larry, you've located the one girl who really won't turn you down. Alright, alright, let's, uh... Actually, uh, this game does have a sequel, and the subtitle of the sequel is Dead Girls Are Easy. Yeah, a little tasteless there, but, uh... All right, so everything here looks the same. Sandy looks the same. Let's head outside, see if there's anything different here. Everything here looks the same. Parking lot looks the same. I don't think there's, yeah, I mean, these cars here, I don't think we can do anything with these the whole game. They're just kind of there as a, as a joke. Uh, okay, so nothing seems to be new here. Coming down this way. Let's see, what do we have here? So this was... Oh yeah, this was that joke, yeah. Okay, and this is... Oh, this is the janitorial supply closet. Oh! Hold on, just just a second. What was this? This was oh yeah, this was that just that reference to 1984, which I don't think I don't think we never get in there either. Okay, so when we found that dead janitor in that room where we first saw the the cyborg, we got this key from his body. Yeah, this is the key to the supply closet. Let's try it out. Hey, here we are. All right, so what do we have here? We have a light bulb hanging from the ceiling. A single light bulb dangles from the crack in the ceiling, casting luminescent glow over the filth and infestation of the janitorial supply closet. It actually looks fairly clean here, but I think that's just an effect. Of See, this is the thing about about uh, low detail sort of, uh, especially early graphics, which didn't have you know 256 colors. If you just had like 16 colors and things to work with, you couldn't really represent griminess very well because you didn't have a lot of colors to represent you know shades of uh, of things so these environments always tend to end up looking up very clean even when they're meant to look dirty that's just kind of a kind of a thing of these old pastel color kind of graphics they make everything look so neat and tidy even when they're not supposed to uh, can we take the light bulb the bulb has probably been burning for many hours straight, and so this may not be the best time, after all, for your Uncle Fester impression. Hmm, yeah, fair enough. Who's this? It's a poster of the great guitar man, that ingenious comic strip character who hits people with a guitar and says swear words. Western civilization has come a long way since the Honeymooners. Is this based on an actual person? Is there some actual figure this is a parody of or something? You have that poster ready. You tack it up over your naughty got cookies. Poster whenever you have a date. It would be nice to hang it up at least once. Oh, wise guitar man, wantest thou descend from thy lofty throne to assist thine brethren in the fruits of goodness? You're alarmed to hear him reply, There's a Moses poster in the boiler room. Talk to him. He owes me a favor. Alright. 
All right, so what do we have here? So we have here a Craftsman electric drill. Currently it has a boring bit. <laughs> well, why, why can't we get a more exciting bit? Uh, points, ka-ching. Ka okay, we have, the, uh, we have the drill. And this over here looks like it's bare wooden shells from the length of both walls. Not much to be found in them, but you assume their main function must be for the cockroach, for cockroach racing. I wasn't clicking on the shells, so I was clicking on this thing here. Come on. It's a flathead flat foot. All right, so it's a flathead screwdriver. Can we take that? Points. Yes, yes, we can. You might notice that our score uh, went above 42. Actually, the, the so-called maximum score of 42 is not really the maximum at all. It's another Hitchhiker's Guide reference, but the maximum score of the game is, I think, uh, if I remember right, it's like 60-something. Uh, so yeah, the 42 here, can, you can disregard that entirely. It's just, a, it's just, a, just another joke. All right, what do we have down here? A round drain leads into the ground, presumably to allow spilled paint egress from the room. This would be a very useful feature if the janitors ever painted anything if, and didn't only make use of it because the bathroom is just too many doors down. All right, so you didn't really have a desire to crawl around through the air vents, but lowering yourself into the janitor's private septic tank is a bit over the line. Yeah, fair enough. Hello, China? All right, so we got the drill, we got the screwdriver. Is there anything in these little cabinets and things we can get? Separated drawers run down the length of one wall, each set with small signs that read nuts, bolts, washers, and countless other tiny bits too complex for you to handle. Each drawer that complains to contain some sort of tool or fastener contains porn, of course. Nothing of use here unless you desperately need a copy of Gay Boys in Bondage. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't need one now, but I could conceivably think of a puzzle where we might be able to use something like that. All right, what about over here? This door claims to contain cleaning supplies. That should be I-E-S. Locklets belongs to be in very good shape. Hmm. It's locked, but since when has that stopped you? Indeed. When indeed? When we have something like... All right, I'm going to assume this key won't work. No. Oh, for some reason it disappeared. Okay. What about that hairpin? Points. Smirking at the camera like Latter Day MacGyver, they still spell it wrong. The the U is not there. I'm pretty at least I'm pretty sure. I would look it up, but I'm, I feel I feel so certain that 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 U shouldn't be there. Anyway, you pick the lock with the hairpin. The only thing you find inside is a bottle of rubbing alcohol, so you grab it. Aha! Okay, now we have rubbing alcohol for that perfect rub, first time every time. Not to be confused with lubricant. Okay, uh, all right. Well, that was a productive excursion into the janitorial supply closet. And what do we have here in the... Uh... Okay, everything here looks exactly the same. In fact, that guy is still there putting his hands over his mouth because he's so excited to have that sweet thing in his mouth. All right, I think we can't do anything here. What about back here? Okay, nothing here looks new. Oh! Okay, well that's new. Uh... A pile of rubble from the heavy door of the maintenance shed lies here, just waiting for someone to come along and give it a good time. Alright, well, let's show it a good time. You feel around and grab the two most suitable pieces of the heavy door. Boy, these things have heft! Alright, so now we have... A couple of very heavy small pieces. Two pretty tiny bits of a very heavy door. All right. Charlie sure did a heck of a job making sure he wouldn't be around to interfere with his gambling, didn't he? How do you get nails to penetrate six inch thick steel anyway? Hmm. Well, where there's a will, there's a way. You can't pull them out with your bare hands. It's just as well, it's getting pretty crowded in your pockets as it is. I don't think we need these boards anyway. And this hole here? So much for the wait out her battery life plan of action. The lovely Rita's 4200 parking enforcement suburb must have crashed heavily through the powerful door. Okay, if that parking enforcement robot can smash through, like, how thick was the... Six... Six inch thick steel. If a parking enforcement robot can smash through six inch thick steel, 
you might have over-engineered that parking robot. No thanks, you've been there, you've done that, you have no desire to own the t-shirt. Can we yell into the hole? Sure, we've gotten pretty close to that dead janitor inside, but this isn't, this isn't really the time to keep in touch. Alright, alright. I think we're done here, I think that's all there is to see here. Oh, we got to hear this nice music again. And I'll probably get copyright claimed for it again. Almost every single video... So, for anyone who's thinking of ever doing a Let's Play of this game, um, YouTube has put a copyright claim on almost every single video that I've uploaded of this game so far because it uses real music, even though it's MIDI renditions. So, as far as I know, MIDI falls under fair use because it's not the original recordings, it's just like a... it's a re-rendering of the same melody. But either YouTube's algorithm isn't that smart, or it, it, it includes melodies, like MIDI files, which use the same melody of a copyrighted song, because every video that I've made of this game has been slapped with a copyright claim. Um, it's not a big problem. It, they're not copyright strikes. So YouTube does distinguish between copyright claims and copyright strikes. A copyright strike is like in baseball. It's three strikes and you're out. If you have three strikes, if you get a third strike in your channel, they will actually suspend your channel. Uh, possibly forever. Um, but a copyright claim is not that serious. A copyright claim just means that you can't get money for that video, and any money, like any advertising revenue that would have been gained on that video goes to the person who owns the copyright for the music instead. Um, in my case, it's fairly irrelevant because I don't make money from my videos, but it's just kind of crazy that YouTube thinks that these DOS MIDI renditions of songs uh, constitute copyright violation of, of, of copyrighted music. It's a little silly. Anyhow, um, all right, so we have a few things now that we can use here. So first of all, um, we did talk to Charlie about weighing the dice. So since the dice are here, Charlie's already rolled the dice again. Yeah, so we saw that. So... How do we weight the dice? Well, I guess a good thing to do would be, let's see, can, so we, we've got these little heavy things now. We've got these, these small but heavy bits of the door. Can we tack those onto the dice? Oh, that's interesting. I think that might have been a bug in the game, um, because... Um, oh dear. That was a bug in the game. Let me see. Can I go back and get those bits of the door again? Because I think what was what I was supposed to do was drill the dice first. And I was hoping I'd get some kind of a sensible error message, but instead the game appears to have not been made to account for that, and it just makes the, the bits disappear. That was not the desired outcome there. That was not what I was hoping would happen there. Well, okay. Let's see if we can go back and get some more bits of the door. Or is, have I entered a, a soft lock state where I can't win the game now? I think... I think I've boned myself now. I think I can't win the game now because... Uh, okay. What I get for not saving the game enough. All right. All right, let's try this again. So, what did we do? Uh, I'll, I'll just quickly retrace my steps. So, we went into our room. We got the. Points! Kuching! Got the hairpin from there. Um. From the janitorial supply closet, we got the stuff, and the thing, and the other thing. Right, we got the drill, Points. and the screwdriver, Points. and this uh, rubbing alcohol. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's all we got from here. And then from outside here, we got the uh, the rubble from the door. And I think that was it. That's all we did. 
So that actually completes our little look around of uh All right, so back on track. Sorry, took a little, had to take a little diversion there, but uh, we are back in the saddle again and ready to uh, resume with the game. So I'll uh, I'll save this time just before just before going to the casino in case we encounter any other. just in case we encounter any other bugs that might uh, waylay our progress. All right, Charlie, so you want us to weigh the dice, uh, the, the dice, right? So let's see, so I think, right, so we're supposed to drill the dice first. Pointing behind the dealer and shouting, behind you, a three-headed three donkey, you take advantage of his, of his lack of attention by drilling holes in the dice. Now to weigh them. At the risk of stating the obvious, I feel like this might not work that way in real life, but um, let's not belabor it. Let's not destroy the fantasy too much. Surreptitiously, Sur you slip the heavy bits of the door into the holes in the dice. Charlie plays along and rolls the weighted dice, landing them perfectly on seven. Yaha! Of course, because he's now on a winning streak, Charlie refuses to come with you to get the phone back, but he does tell you that the grifter is staying in room 124. Oh, I almost forgot. The password is Urkelmania. Urkelmania, you say? All right. All right, thanks, Charlie. All right, so he's not going to help us. He's going to stay here gambling like a true partner, but... Uh... Okay, well, we... Um... We uh, got the password, and we got we know what room that guy is in, so that should be all we need. Oh yeah, and since we have that rubbing alcohol now, let's go ahead and take the take advantage of the opportunity of being here, and uh, let's put it in this gentleman's drink. Let's do this guy a favor and try to cure him of his alcoholism. Pretending you're either Sam Malone, Isaac, Moe, or Tom Cruise in cocktail, you splash a dab of rubbing alcohol into the stranger's drink. Angry, he pushes you away and tells you not to bother coming back. On the plus side, though, you did manage to get that drink away from him. The man wants nothing to do with you. How will you ever make it up to him? Aww. Well, a glass of alcohol is some alcohol mixed in for good measure. Yeah, we, we put alcohol in his alcohol to make his alcohol unappealing. All right. Oh, yeah, and while we're here... um. I don't know how you're supposed to do this, but you use the screwdriver on the slot machine. Making sure there's nobody watching, you jimmy the coin box open with the screwdriver. Ka-ching! There's hundreds of dollars in coins here. Good thing you happen to be carrying your obtrusive blue money sack. Points! Ka-ching! There we go. We have at least a couple hundred dollars in coins now from the slot machine. Pretty sure that slot machines are made such that you can't just pry open the coin box from outside like that. Uh, pretty sure they are made to exactly to prevent people from doing stuff like that. But once again, let's not destroy the fantasy by um, thinking about stuff like that. So we want, uh, what was it, room... We're looking for that room uh, with that guy who cheats at cards now. Um, so I think it wasn't any of these. And this just goes to the reception where Sandy's, uh, where Sandy is. But uh, what do we have here? Okay, didn't Charlie say it was room 124? I think he did. All right, so this looks like the place to be. Let's save again. Card man. All right, so can you open the door? Okay, we need to be invited. When the door is locked. All right. Okay. We, okay. So we talk to the door. You lean close to the door and shout Urkelmania as loud as you can for the first time since the series fina finale of Family Matters. Slowly the door opens. For those who don't remember, Steve Urkel was a character on Family Matters back in the day. This was a while ago, but this game is just full of old references. Removing your badge and storing it in your pocket for obvious reasons, you slip on your poker face and enter. 
You sit down at the large man's card table. He means to do business, and that business is three card Montgomery. And all you have to do is select the red queen. Odd. Last you knew if nobody knew of any way to cheat at that game. All right. So, what do we have here? We have a guy wearing a shirt that says, Steal this shirt. And he probably did. Call me old-fashioned, but I really doubt that Steal this shirt slogan applies when somebody is already wearing it. Well, who says that? It can apply, can it? All right. Always the swindler. The, the grifter appears to have won this hat off of Dark Wing Duck. That's true. It is Dark Wing Duck's hat, isn't it? Kind of, yeah. You check under his hat. No, no hidden cards there. All right. It's the fat grifter that swindled Charlie out of your cellular phone. Charlie told you he was crafty, but he certainly didn't mention he was so handsome. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. What's he got in his hands? It doesn't really add much to your confidence in winning to see that he's got a tight grip on his copy of Swindling for Dummies. Let's steal the book. Unlike that, if the bald guy in the casino, this guy's tight grip on his position does not let up during the course of the game. Aww. Alright, let's chat with this, with this guy. He's really not interested in conversation right now. Take care of the business at, at hand. You can ask him out for coffee when you're finished. Okay, so what? So we really just have the three cards here. The cards all look the same face down. Which one could be the elusive Red Queen? Hmm, I'll say this one. Two of spades. Rats, you're just about to inquire about why the Grifter has a men of Fiji deck of cards, but you opt to just fork over your money and leave. All right. You did a fine job of turning the card over, Larry, a fine job. All right, um, let's try again. Let's see what happens if we, uh, let's try the, uh, Draw the middle card this time. Not quite the Red Queen. You're tempted to remind him that this card should have been taken out of the deck, but you're not looking to get your, get your money back on a technicality. How to play Go Fish. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not supposed to be in the deck. All right. And the third card here is... It isn't the Red Queen and you lose your money. You wonder if he knows this is a Pokemon card or if he thinks Jigglypuff is the fifth suit. Okay, so we have a Two of Spades, a How to Play Go Fish card, and a Pokemon card here. None of these are the Red Queen that we need. Um, hmm. This is the flimsy old paper mat that the cards are sitting on. It's a folding card table. Flimsy, but hey, swindlers can't be choosers. You check beneath the card table. No hidden cards there. Well, there are no hidden cards here. The, the trick is just that the winning card doesn't exist. You have three cards, and none, none of them are the winning cards. So hold on. Let's let's do this. Let's load our game. Actually, I don't think we even need to load the game. I don't think the game actually makes you lose. I, I don't think you can really lose all your money in the game. You can just keep playing this game endlessly. But um, let's do this. Instead of clicking on a card, let's click on this uh, this red mat thing that's underneath the cards. Giving the paper mat an ingenious tug, you manage to flip all the codes ho cards over at once, thus unmasking the grifter's method once and for all. The grifter, still believing you to just be, no to be just another average Joe rather than an average Larry, has no fear. Smells like the opportunity for a bust to me. Of course, you'd better hope you have something more frightening to present him with than a traffic division identification card, otherwise you might as well stick your tail between your legs right now. So yeah, it's always just these three cards. So the guy's trick, his, his winning trick is just that th there is no winning card. He just put three losing cards down and said, pick, uh, find the winning card. Well, we do have something more threatening to show him, show him than our uh, traffic cop ID. What about this FI, uh, FBI agent ID? Let's try going with this. Please. Hold it right there, Minnesota fats. Special Agent Scalder, FBI. Is this message going to advance, or do I need to click, or... I'll click. Frightened, the man attempts to catch you off guard by throwing a cellular phone at your face. You manage to catch it, but he shoves you out of the room before you can actually do anything to him. All right, well, I guess that was that. But we got the phone. Ah! Oh. The precinct cellular phone. The batteries appear dead, however. We got the phone, but the, the battery's dead. 
cell phone is dead, lost in the desert. Can I go back in here and play again? Oh, I guess the guy's gone. All right. All right, well, um, hmm. We have a mobile phone, but its battery is dead. Where could we plug it in? Now, in real life, you'd probably go to your hotel room because normally hotel room will have some electrical outlets that you can use there, but that would be too simple for this game, wouldn't it now? We need to do something really wacky and crazy and wild. Let's see, what can we do that's totally wacky and crazy and wild here? Um, what do we have in our inventory that we haven't used yet? We haven't used that whistle. Don't think we've used the scissors yet, or have we? Um, hmm. No, no, we have. We've used the scissors. The drill, the money, the drink. Hmm. The drinky drinky, the drinky winky. What did Sandy say when we first talked to her? I wish the casino were open. I could sure use a drink. Ahem. <clears throat> All right, so this conversation goes on, but Sandy would like a drink. Also, the, the casino is open now, but I, I guess you can't just walk away from the reception to get drinks, so... Uh... All right, Sandy wants a drink. Let's see if we can remedy that, uh, that thirst of hers. In a scene you'll be glad was admitted, Sandy drinks herself senseless and grabs the nearest vacant room with that creepy loner from the casino. Goodbye, Sandy. You were a damn fine plot device. That's it? That's it? Is, is the creepy guy from the casino gone now? Oh, he, he was there and then he, he disappeared. Okay, yeah, he's, he's gone. He, uh... Sandy hooked up with... So Sandy hook, would have rather hook up with that guy than with Larry Vales. I mean, come on. Larry Vales has those killer sidebirds, and this is... Ah, uh, there's just no winning in this life, is there? At least not in this game. All right, well... I guess that means that we can see what's behind the reception desk, but we'll have to do that next time, because I'll go ahead and finish the video here. Let's save the game and say... Bye, Felicia! Alright, this has been Larry Bale's Traffic Division. I will talk to you folks next time. Until then, bye-bye for now.